Let's be honest. I'm your favorite Disney princess. I'm Hug, and this little shit is Earhart. Earhart is a little prick, but Earhart has been a good friend of mine for six or seven years. How Earhart came to live with me was that I was sitting at home one day and a friend of mine sent me a Facebook message out of the blue say, asking me if I wanted to adopt a flightless crow. My response was, ever since I was 11, why? She explained that she had been originally planning on adopting the bird from a vet who was treating him for injuries but there were too many cats in her area, so she couldn't. And I was the first person she thought of as a substitute. The fact that I'm the person people think of for adopting wild birds makes me very, very happy. Very, very happy. <laughs> so I went to the vet, and I went to collect Earhart. Earhart, uh, when Earhart got to me, Earhart could barely stand. Earhart's feathers were singed and chopped up. He, the talons were really long and bent and crooked. You can still see how Earhart's wing looks like it's kind of hanging off. That was the result of uh, a collision with a plane. That will never get better than it is now, and Earhart will never be able to fly again. Earhart is of course named after Amelia Earhart, because they got into this predicament in an accident with a plane. So I adopted this wild bird, having never had a pet bird of any kind in my life, wild or otherwise. It took me a couple of weeks to hand tame Earhart. It was a tricky process. I had to bribe them with uh, chocolate covered raisins. Earhart mostly eats cat food and table scraps. The vet literally told us they eat out of bins, feed it anything. Earhart is specifically a rook which is a species of corvid common to Europe and parts of Asia. Rooks are a very social species of corvid. They live in colonies of hundreds, sometimes thousands. And as I have found out through taking care of Earhart, they are very socially responsible birds. When we were living in Drogheda, the local rooks used to visit Earhart quite frequently, uh, helping groom him, that kind of thing. Here where we live now, the local birds, even though our heart gets fed every single day, the local rooks still visit and bring food. One time I was sitting out in the garden and half a sandwich just slapped straight onto the pavement in front of me. It was really funny. We don't know what sex Earhart is. Rooks have very weak sexual dimorphism. The females are just very slightly smaller than the males. And because Earhart is significantly smaller than most other rooks, we think their growth may have been stunted in the accident. There is one particular rook that keeps visiting. It's got a slightly deformed beak, which makes it very easy to identify. And we believe this to be Earhart's suitor. It keeps flying down, perching near Earhart, walking around the garden with Earhart. What's strange is that it exhibits both male and female courtship behaviors. It begs for food, which would generally be a female courtship behavior in rooks, but it has also come and brought food for Earhart, which would generally be a male courtship behavior. So we don't know. We don't know. Homosexuality in rooks is definitely a thing, but there's no research on what the courtship behaviors in a homosexual rook relationship would be. So we don't know. No idea. Maybe it's some kind of trans bird. Who knows? Rooks are extremely intelligent. They display problem-solving abilities. Earhart has untied nuts. He has undone nuts and bolts. In fact, his first cage was held together with nuts and bolts. It didn't last long. Earhart can observe what you are doing with certain things and know what those things are for. For example, Earhart has often seen me drink out of Coke cans. And thus, one time when Earhart was left unattended, punched a hole in a Coke can with their face in order to get at the liquid inside knowing that it was a drink. Earhart and I have gone on a couple of adventures together. We like to wander around. We got hired, the pair of us, as extras on a TV show. I'll be letting you know more about that once it gets released. We had to travel roughly 140 miles on trains and buses to get out there. It was, it was really fun though. They gave us a trailer. A trailer. I have taken in two other books. One was a baby that I found in a sewage grate by the side of the road. I wasn't 
I wasn't carrying anything appropriate for carrying the baby in at the time. In fact, I wasn't carrying anything. So I took off my t-shirt, wrapped that around the bird and carried it home, bare chested. It wasn't until I got the poor thing home that I realized it was paralyzed from the legs down. Uh, and its legs were ice cold. That bird, unfortunately, despite us feeding it and keeping it warm and giving it plenty to drink, didn't survive the night. The other one I took in was one I just ran into on the way home from the shop. It was very old, very fat. It was like a big black ball with wings and walking, it would kind of roll onto one foot across its belly and then roll across its belly onto the other one and it would waddle along like that. I approached it and when I got right up to it and it wasn't flying away, I realized it couldn't fly away. So I brought it home, we fed it, it got along quite well with their heart. They liked, they liked perching together out in the garden and eating scraps together. We named that bird Odin. Odin lasted two, three weeks before dying. Uh, Odin was just very, very, very old, very old. The death lasted a long time. Odin was twitching and calling weakly the whole way through. It took about 15 minutes. The death of the younger bird was very quick, so it didn't bother me too much. It seemed quite painless, but with Odin, there was a lot of fear and a lot of pain, and that hit me pretty hard. Because rooks are such social birds, they bond very quickly with other corvids and with humans. They quite like humans, and um, Erhard will gladly eat out of your hand. Very, very gladly and eagerly. One other advantage I've noticed to having a rook of my own is that the local rooks end up trusting you more. I had some of the rooks in Drogheda eating out of my hand, and the rooks here, we haven't lived here as long, they're getting less nervous about my presence, they're letting me get a lot closer, and I'm expecting I'll have them eating out of my hand pretty soon as well. Rooks, like other corvids, talk to each other. The collective noun for rooks, well, there's two. One is parliament, but that's boring. The other one is great. It's a storytelling of rooks, and that's just amazing. One thing you'll see very often in a country with rooks is one rook perched up high above a field, and another one perched opposite it, equally high, and they will just shout back and forth at each other constantly, all day long. In Irish folklore, rooks are said to be good luck. If you have rooks living on your property, that's a good thing. And if they leave, it means something bad is going to happen. So farmers would often fight over boundary trees that had rook colonies in them. Rooks, like all other corvids, are heavily associated with the Morrigan, goddess of war. Though I heavily dispute the label of gods being applied to any of the two of them, and I don't think it fits. They were often associated with war specifically because the lack of feathers around their face and beak makes them look like they're wearing a little battle helmet. Just a tiny battle helmet. That's Rooks, that's Erhard. I hope you enjoyed getting to meet this little piece of shit. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Rooks and Rook behavior. It's something I only know about because of Erhard and having to deal with this thing. But I thought it was interesting. It was something you might want to know. And if it's not, then I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Anyway, go on Erhard. Go! 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 You have been jumping off my hand all day when I didn't want you to. Go. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. There you go.